okay so we would be starting with your paper 1 in group 1 this is advanced accounting and myself babik i'll be teaching the entire or large uh, the entire part of advanced accounting with you guys <coughs> now this is in your group 1 undoubtedly the most scoring paper so if you look at your advanced accounting this is something which should definitely fetch you at least exemption grade marks because you might have other papers like law maybe dt which are a little more complex and relatively uh, scoring might be a problem but advanced accounts is something where we will do it really well we'll do it in depth and a lot of detailing <coughs> and we will think that our passing marks are 60 plus only we'll definitely score more than that people have also secured uh, reasonably good marks uh, fairly good marks in uh, advanced accounting as well so earlier just a bit of background for this subject earlier there were two papers on accounting there was accounting paper 1 and then there was an advanced accounting paper 5 now your attempt and probably the earlier attempt were the fortunate attempts where this became a single paper earlier there were a lot of topics which are unnecessary which are put into your syllabus like a departmental account like a single entry like a fire insurance this and that which really do not have as much impact on accounting accounting per se once you qualify now all of that has been removed your entire course has been streamlined in line with final ca only by and large so what the topics that you see over here a lot of these topics will again repeat at a much more advanced level in your final ca so all of those topics which were not as relevant have now been rationalized will remove from your syllabus so you see a fairly tiny index you will have close to 30 35 topics okay so there are a lot of topics but each topic uh, is most of them are small small accounting standards so there are close to 27 accounting standards that you have all the accounting standards that are there are now applicable at ca inter level and there are so, so that is the first part so almost your entire volume one so you will have three books first is a velocity book where we discuss all of our concepts everything which is at a concept level if you go to see will be there in that book so uh, explanation on your last day revision everything so if you just refer that book at a concept level you should be clear with the entire provisions then you will have two volumes volume number 1 will have accounting standards all of these accounting standards which are there and with that questions and solutions both we will do the questions along with solutions in your notes wherever required but if it is a pure pure theory we can discuss and write a summary solution otherwise for numerical we will sit and solve volume 2 is on bigger chapters amalgamation consolidation internal reconstruction buyback etc all cash flow statement all of these will be there in your volume 2 here in volume 2 you don't i, I mean you will have to solve these sums to get a much more better grip uh so when you look at your paper in your advanced accounting paper your paper like every other paper now earlier the papers were slightly different but now if you go to see your 100 mark paper out of which there are 30 marks on mcqs so this is may 24 being the first attempt where you had mcqs for accounting earlier accounting never had mcqs so this is around 30 marks of mcqs really really scoring an institute usually asks a lot of accounting standards over here so when i go to see over here approximately a 60 40 weightage would be there where 60 marks would be accounting standards we call it as as we'll see what accounting standards are and everything but just to give you an introduction and let us say 40 marks would be from the other topics or we call them as big topics big chapters what are the big chapters single single chapters which is consolidation amalgamation internal reconstruction etc so largely accounting standards will have a 60% weight over here so this is around 30 marks what do you have negative markings over here no uh, in foundation did you have negative marking i think 0.25 ya kuch was negative right so at final c as well as c inter we have mcqs which is without negative marking so it is fairly scoring and there are no negative markings as well while you are solving mcqs we will do a separate practice for mcqs as well but if your core content is good by the way your mcqs get sorted you will do a separate practice but if your core content is weak your mcqs are by default weak if your core content is good your entire 
topics is volume 1, volume 2 as well as velocity is good. MCQs are going to be sailed through. You will typically have around 15 MCQs of 2 2 marks each on an average and as a result that is around 30 marks. Do I need to give any explanation in my MCQs? No. Whether you show rough work or not, it does not matter. If your MCQ is right, apne tukka bhi mara. your MCQ is right, well, it is right. You get your marks. Okay. So, this is 30 marks for MCQ, which is a separate paper. And then you get a separate paper, descriptive paper, we call this of 70 marks. So, this is your descriptive paper. Your entire, I think all subjects have a similar pattern within the descriptive paper, question number 1. So, this is basically 14 marks. Ke. Kitane questions hone chahiye, ideally? How much? How many questions should be there? 5. However, you will have 14 marks, ke, 6 questions. So, this is MCQs, you have no option. But in descriptive, you will have an option. So, over here, you will have 14 marks, ke, 6 questions, that is 84 marks over here. Out of which, question 1 goes in as compulsory. Usually, this question comes from accounting standards. Usually, even in the older syllabus, even now, it usually comes from the accounting standards setup. Even in May 24, it came from accounting standards. And then between question number 2 up to question number 6, you will have to solve any 4. So, you will have an option over here. So, this is your paper pattern. And uh, obviously, advanced accounting being the first paper, this will set the tone for you for all the other papers as well. So, when we look at are we clear with this? Any problems? Right? Okay. So, when we look at your overall weightage, now when you look at the weightage over here, even in the 70 mark paper, almost certainly between, so I will not call it as a 70 mark paper, I will actually call it as an 84 mark paper because when we look at the weightage, that is out of the entire 84 marks. Out of 84 marks, minimum 42, bare minimum 42, that is half the paper. And going all the way up to, let us say, sometimes 50-55 marks will be from the bigger chapter. So, here the weightage of the bigger chapters is slightly more. So, you will have a 40-60 weightage. So, typically over here, in the bigger chapters, I would say around 40 marks. 40 to 45 marks will be from the accounting standards and around 60% will be from the bigger chapter. So, all in all, if I look at it on a simplistic base, your volume 1 will fetch you 50 marks, MCQ and theory combined. Volume 2 will also fetch you 50 marks, volume 1, volume 2, uh, so MCQ theory combined. Generally, accounting standards are more. Topics are five. So, when you look at your overall weightage, we will split this into two topics, two sections. There would be accounting standards. Okay. So, if you see your index, a majority of your index, if you look at your index over here, majority of your index, if you go to see over here till around 24, 25, all of this is largely accounting standards. Okay, There are other topics on accounting standards also, which we take along with the bigger chapters, but these are core simple accounting standards. So, you will have close to 25 topics on AS. And then if you go to see from 26 up to around 33, around 7 to 8 topics, which is on bigger chapters, preparation of financial statements. What do we study over here? How do you prepare the balance sheet? Have you prepared balance sheets earlier? You have done probably sole proprietor. Egidam T form ka balance sheet. Maybe you have done partnership as well. But company accounts, I think you have just scratched the surface. You just had basic, basic company accounts at CA Foundation. So, over here you will have, let us say, at finals you are largely going to do only company accounts. You see, there is zero partnership over here, zero sole proprietor, nothing. There is only and only company accounts at your finals. See, we, even if you have not done it at CA Inter, no worries, we will do it from scratch. CA Foundation, we will do it at scratch only. So, over here, preparation of financial statements would be a chapter where you are going to use Prepare a balance sheet, prepare your profit and loss account, see how your numbers are going to flow through. A very easy chapter. Next, you go to buyback of securities. Uh, maybe in law, you might have touched upon a bit of buyback. But over here, this is a much more scoring chapter. If it comes, on average, your exam weightage should be around 5 to 7 marks. That too, it will not come in every attempt. For example, May 24, it had not come. It's not as important. It's not almost certain. And then comes accounting for internal reconstruction. 
accounting for consolidation and amalgamation so these topics i think 28 amalgamation 29 internal reconstruction and 31 consolidated finance this will certainly come in your exams again internal reco may or may not come for the entire 14 marks but amalgamation and consolidation 100 percent you will get a 14 mark question on amalgamation you will get a 14 mark question on consolidation some students are very comfortable with it when you sit and solve come se come five to six pages in your answer book will just go behind one question but you will get it right but some students get a little intimidated by those big size of problems if you have process your answers will flow in place but if your process is not as good you get kind of lost in bigger questions then you double up your efforts in the accounting standard section because accounting standards will almost always be 4, 5, 6, 7 ke upar toh, there is no chance there will be a question so there will be relatively smaller questions digestible bit size questions rather than being full 14 mark questions okay so this will almost certainly come in your exams abhi branch mein se something might or might not come buyback might say something may or may not come preparation of finance statements may or may not come but these three will almost certainly come right so over here when you look at your weightage you will have accounting standards there are a total of 27 accounting standards out of which around four accounting standards we to do with the bigger chapters only amalgamation consolidation joint venture associate we do it with a bigger chapter so you are left with around 24 account 23 accounting standards that you are going to do over here will on an average give you a 50 percent weightage you will get a 50 percent weightage including including the compulsory question will come from generally accounting standards and including majority of mcqs which are you don't have an option will come from accounting standards and then from the big chapters almost certainly you will have let's say a 50 percent weightage you will have a 50 percent weight out of which you will definitely get a big question on consolidation you will definitely get a big question on amalgamation and most likely even internal reconstruction you will probably get this for around 35 to 40 marks as a descriptive section and your other chapters you will get probably out of the other chapter so this is assured weightage assured question it will come in your exam whereas the other chapters if there are three other chapters preparation of financial statements which also includes a cash flow statement then you have a uh, branch accounting buyback you might get a question or so from this you will not get questions on all of them so shayad branch ka question na hai buyback ka question na hai or you might get a small mcq consolidation amalgamation will definitely come so maybe uh, two questions slash mcqs will come from this other chapter section are we clear with this yes so this is your overall understanding and overall overview of your uh, advanced accounting any problem till now no okay so in today's class we'll do absolute basics only we'll just do a basic introduction and from probably later today or maybe from tomorrow we will be jumping into let us say the actual chapters so these board notes I will share with you on your Google Drive. So on a Google Drive, I will share whatever I write. But that does not mean you don't write. Okay. So for you writing practice as well as doing things on your own on pen and paper, especially for things like accounting is a must. If it's a pure, pure theory question, then we can review the printed solution. But if it is a numerical question or a case based question, we would like to solve it on our own. Okay. Okay. So let us get started. Today we will be starting with um, <coughs> with your accounting standard section. Before that, I'll just give a very quick introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Bhavik and I've been uh, teaching CA final as well as CA inter since around 12 years full time. And earlier also, I've been teaching since a very long time. When I was in college, your age, I would always teach, but I would teach 
kids from 3rd to 9th standard, I would never touch the 10th or 12th standard. I would think that they are pretty critical. So for pocket money, I would uh, I was teaching and then I was quite passionate about my teaching and at the same time, uh, I loved finance per se. So I wanted to make a career in finance. So I, uh, I kind of uh, did my CA, got fortunately a rank in my CA final and uh, did my CS as well as CFA. CFA I did after my CA got over and I then worked in Morgan Stanley in their investment banking teams followed by JM Financial also in their investment banking teams. Uh, however, I used to even then teach, I, I used to teach a lot on weekends at that point I used to teach CFA but uh, I, mean, I mean teaching got the better of me and I decided I want to do this full time and since I think 2012 or so we have been uh, teaching and uh, so we have, I've, I've kind of managed to get the privilege to teach all levels and even CFA I've managed to teach all the way up to CFA level 3. And apart from teaching, I kind of uh, like swimming a lot. I do open water swimming. I've managed to go up to state level. And the national me to kuch apne ko mila nahi, but still I at least uh, kind of tried. I do open water swimming and a bit of travel, backpacking when I don't have lectures. I kind of uh, like to do that. So probably during the course, whenever we get a chance, up to the bore ho to we can share a few stories as well. Abhi <coughs> definitely. We will try to keep it interactive and if you have any doubts, please do uh, let me know as well. Yeah. So introduction to accounting standards. Now have you done or heard about any accounting standards in the past? Have you heard the word accounting standards? Yes. In foundation, I think you had some AS2 or something, inventory ka kuch shayad, maybe you might have seen but otherwise you have not done a lot of accounting standards earlier. Now, who, what is an accounting standard first of all? Why do you need an accounting standard and what is an accounting standard? Anything in your own words. Very nice. It is to maintain uniformity and consistency. As the name goes, it is accounting standards. So, I want to keep standardization. I want to keep uniformity. For example, uh, let us say you have Zomato which is a listed company. Swiggy as we speak is not yet listed but there are talks that Swiggy will also get listed in the near future. So now if Zomato is preparing its financial statements in as per a particular policy, Swiggy uses some other policies only. So if an investor wants to decide which of the two companies is better, well, they are following different accounting practices. How will I compare and decide which of the two companies is better? So to avoid that problem, we say that I, I want standardization, accounting standards, standardization in accounting. So inventory is followed. Have you heard about the word FIFO? First in, first out, weighted average method. If inventory is to be followed, every company has to follow these methods only. You can't invent your own method and uh, do inventory evaluation, no. So you need accounting standards largely to maintain uniformity. Now who, who gives out the accounting standards? Who drafts the accounting standards? Sorry? Who drafts the accounting standards? ICI, our beloved institute would be drafting the accounting standards. So the process and this is just for a broad understanding before we go is within ICI there is an accounting standards board ASB accounting standards board which will be like your modules that your institute study material that you see is from board of studies. If you have heard there is a BOS board of studies in a similar way there is an accounting standards board. What they would do is they will identify an area. Like today as we speak, a very buzzing topic is cryptocurrency. Now as we speak today, cryptocurrency ka there is no accounting standard. So they will identify a particular topic where companies need some guidance. So they will say, there is a lot of cryptocurrency, it is not as, it is not the same as cash, it is not even the same as investment in bonds or debentures. So maybe I need to give them guidance. Then there will be a study group that is formed. A study group will then study the nuances, the complexities and they will make a draft. That draft is given out for comments to the big CA firms, the big four for example, big corporates where they will study and they will give their own feedback. They will say no you, are, uh, you have written that this should be done but according to us it is very difficult practically to apply this. They will see that feedback, then they will make changes as relevant and then they will give something called as an exposure draft. Exposure draft means a draft that can expose to the world. 
दे विल गिव एन एक्सपोजर ड्राफ्ट एंड इन दैट एक्सपोजर ड्राफ्ट आप भी यू कैन ऑल्सो रिव्यू एंड गिव यूर फीडबैक कोई सुनने वाला है नहीं बट यू कैन ऑलवेज गिव यूर फीडबैक सो दैट वेज दैट फीडबैक दे विल गिव लेट से फ्यू मंथ फॉर पीपल टू स्टडी एंड not just the competent chartered accountants and everyone anyone who wants to give feedback can give feedback again the study group will review and then they will decide on what should be the final draft of the standard and then they will formulate the standard however our institute remember is not a legislative body you understand legislative body a legislative body is a body which is capable of forming a law our institute cannot form a law like the parliament can make a law it's a legislative body like have you heard about budget now madam sita raman will come and she will say something and she will give a budget parliament will pass it it becomes an act institute cannot do that because it does not have legislative powers it can always make a draft because i am an expert but i cannot make a law so institute will have a draft it will prepare a draft in consultation now i am not sure whether you track it in the newspaper or not have you heard about something called as nafra national financial regulatory authority earlier there was no nafra when we cleared and even before 2019 or 20 there was no nafra our institute when it forms it will be the most superior then for example there was a general perception that institute ka monopoly ho raha hai ICAI ka and hence the government formed a national financial regulatory authority of India where government ke log aake baithte and in consultation with nafra institute has to make the accounting standards it does not have the uniform sole authority now so ICAI in consultation with nafra why are we discussing all of this apne bas time hi time hai no 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 it is because all of this can come in an mcq you will not get a descriptive question they will tell, tell you what is the role of nafra abcd in standard setting process we'll say can nafra form a law no can icai form a law no it will be in consultation with nafra icai and nafra will work together to form the accounting standards you can get this as an mcq now still you have drafted the accounting standards you cannot make it a law so accounting standards what is the applicability of accounting standards in your ca foundation maybe you might have studied about the partnership act of 1932 did you study that are yes or no so what do you guys think in the partnership act was it required that the accounts have to be prepared using accounting standards as per the partnership act of 1932 humne kuch bother nahi kiya we did not bother as much but was accounting stand required no otherwise how did you prepare partnership balance sheet You prepared partnership balance sheet without any knowledge of accounting standard. आपने basic accrual matching concept ये सब use करके balance sheet बना है. You did not use any accounting standard. So for partnership firm, the Partnership Act which governs, or let us say for HUF, the Hindu Succession Act etc., or let's say a proprietor, there is the law governing these do not require them to follow accounting standard. and hence for a partnership firm for an huf for a sole proprietor is accounting standards mandatory no however when you go to companies in companies when you study law you will have a section 129 of the companies act section 129 of the companies act mandatorily requires every company kitna bhi turnover hone do your turnover is 2 crores 5 crores 2 lakhs 20 lakhs 2000 zero rupees turnover does not matter if you are a company the companies act mentions that you will have to prepare your accounts and present them following accounting standards only and hence as per the companies act and iske liye aapko abhi at inter and final ye padhaya jata because after this you are going to go into article ship then in final ca you clear and you will uh, you will recruit articles then so that is if you go into your own profession you go into business usually do you think an huf a sole proprietor a small partnership firm aapke jaise talented chartered accountant ko recruit karne ke liye unke paas paisa nahi hoga generally what you will study what the bread and butter that you will have is company accounts because companies need chartered accountants usually a partnership firm a sole proprietorship an huf does not need a full time ce they might need a ca for filing returns and two or three different things but full time ca ka zarurat nahi padta companies mein compulsory lagta 
and as a result over here institute trains you a lot pehle inter se mein jo kachra tha they have removed everything they have said ke let us keep our focus very clear on the company side let us teach them full company accounts that when you go to article ship everything that you study over here will be applied आर्टिकल शिप में जितना आपका अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड स्ट्रॉन्ग उतना आपका आर्टिकल शिप का इंटरव्यू अच्छा सो इन आर्टिकल शिप यू विल बी ओनली आस्ट अबाउट टू थिंग्स योर डीटी पेपर एंड योर अकाउंटिंग पेपर अकाउंटिंग में सिर्फ दे विल बी आस्किंग यू अबाउट अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स एंड डीटी के अंदर वॉट एवर इज गोइंग टू बी अदर पेपर आर नॉट गोइंग टू इम्पैक्ट योर आर्टिकल शिप और आर्टिकल शिप इंटरव्यू पर से बट ऐसा नहीं कि पढ़ना नहीं है यू हैव टू गो टू आर्टिकल शिप यू टू क्लियर ऑल पेपर सो दैट वेज दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर ओवरऑल करियर and practical experience as well yes okay so for companies think and tell me is accounting standards mandatory yes for partnership firm individuals huf etc is it mandatory no if you want to follow no one is going to stop you but the partnership act does not tell you what you studied that accounts have to be prepared as per accounting standards like section 129 of the companies act tells you that your accounts have to be prepared using accounting standards only are we clear with this okay now does that mean that for other then companies this is useless generally no now have you started audit or anything no okay so as a chartered accountant we get a test powers we get audit powers right we are capable of doing audits and we can put our sign so let us say there is a partnership firm which wants to get get its accounts audited is that possible can a partnership firm get its accounts audited yes compulsory nahi in partnership act it is nowhere written that you have to get yourself audited company sec again will tell you bhai audit karna padega partnership act does not tell you but i want to get my accounts audited or let us say there is some requirement i want to take a loan bank says i am not going to give you loan I will give you loan only if I see financial statements. But आप तो कोई भी statement बना लो. I need statements which have been certified by a chartered accountant. A CA, a CA will only attest and give his opinion on accounts if they are as per accounting standards. So what happens over here is like a chicken and egg. In terms of partnership firm, if I am a small partnership firm, let us say you and your friend start a small partnership firm. क्या कि भाई चलो नवरात्रि is coming, we will uh, uh, buy passes from somewhere and sell it at a price. It's a very small partnership firm. Do you need to get your accounts audited or done anything? No, it's a partnership firm. General partnership you can form. आपने basic कच्चा हिसाब कर दिया and that is about it. You don't separately need to. get your accounts certified are we getting this but as you go further aapne kya suna rahega aapne suna hai ca firms aisa suna ca company suna hai kya aapne it is ca firms so the biggest of the firms that you hear about pwc deloitte eny kpmg all of these are firms they are partnerships you think for a lot of purpose they will need to get their accounts audited अरे मैं दूसरे का ऑडिट कर रहा हूं मेरा खुद का तो ठिकाना होना चाहिए सो फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ रीजन आई विल नीड टू गेट माय अकाउंट्स ऑडिटेड कंसल्टेंसी फॉर्म्स अ लॉट ऑफ दीज फॉर्म्स वांट टू हैव देयर अकाउंट्स व्हिच आर डन प्रिपेयर्ड बाय सर्टिफाइड अकाउंटेंट्स एंड इफ दे वॉन्ट टू गेट देयर अकाउंट ऑडिटेड दैट कैन ओनली बी डन इफ देर अकाउंट आर प्रिपेयर एज पर अकाउंटिंग स्टैंड So if it comes, let us say as an MCQ, let us say the applicability. First of all, we studied about introduction to accounting standards. We said accounting standards are necessary for uniformity, to ensure better comparison, to ensure that uh, uh, companies give out information which is useful for the readers to make their decisions. Who makes the accounting standards? Well, ICAI has an accounting standards board, an ASB, which kind of has this process of giving out a draft. seeking opinions exposure draft getting opinions and then formulating and giving out a standard for the relevant topic ICI in consultation with NAFRA will draft the accounting standards however when do the accounting standards become mandatory once they are notified by ministry of company affairs mc apne teen bodies sunne apne which are the three bodies ICAI along with NAFRA who are going to draft the accounting standards and mca ministry of company affairs who has legal powers who can form a law 
so nafra and icci make up this thing they gave it to the government government reviews it if the government thinks uh, that there is no further changes required they will notify it they will notify it and that is when it becomes a law are we clear with this so for something to be legally applicable government has to notify ministry of company affairs has that power now the applicability you guys have to help me with this applicability to whom is it applicable let us say for companies what do you guys think is it mandatory or not mandatory perfect for companies accounting standards are mandatory for other entities what can be other entities well partnership firms sole proprietor huf trust etc is it mandatory no so if you need a ca to certify if ca certificate slash audit needed then will we have to prepare accounting accounts as per accounting standards then apply accounting standards however in other cases where ca certificate etc is not needed is it mandatory to follow accounting standards no this is not mandatory are we clear with this okay now let us delve a little more into this and you might get a small question on this as well from an exam perspective we will generally rate the chapters as tier 1 that is a category chapters most important tier 2 b category average importance tier c uh tier 3 that is category c least important so this is i would say something into the tier c or three category in terms of exam weightage it is relatively less important but if something comes in your exam it will come from the section that we are about to discuss now now icai has segregated the entities aap mere ko bataye kitne accounting standards hai 27 perfect but when you read this heading over here in your index this will go up to as 29 chronologically there will be two standards which are missing as 6 which was earlier a standard on depreciation which now got merged with fixed assets as 8 which was earlier a standard on research and development which now got merged with intangibles other than that chronological sequence 1 2 3 4 5 6 ud gaya 7 8 ud gaya 9 10 11 all the way up to 29 sequential order are we clear with this so there are 27 accounting standards and each of the 27 accounting standards you have to study in your syllabus okay so these are the 27 accounting standards now icai has given levels have you ever seen an annual report of company have you ever seen earlier hard copy aata tha aapke ghar pe your parents might have invested in stock market आपने तो शायद अब तक नहीं किया रहेगा नाउ ऑलमोस्ट ऑल कंपनी सेव स्टॉप हार्ड कॉपीज आर गिविंग यू ईमेल पे एनुअल रिपोर्ट पीडीएफ फॉर्मेट पे बट इफ यू सी योर एनुअल रिपोर्ट वो कम से कम इफ यू लुक एट रिलायंस एंड ऑल ऑफ दिस कंपनीज कम से कम 200 300 पेजेस का डॉक्यूमेंट होता सो देयर आर सो मेनी डिस्क्लोजर्स एटसेट्रा हैव टू बी गिवन एंड ऑल ऑफ दोस डिस्क्लोजर्स फॉर एग्जांपल कैन बी एज पर अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स सो नाउ वी आर ट्राइंग टू सी that there are 27 accounting standards does every entity if you want to set up a company can you also set up a company if you want yes do i need to have 100 crores and 200 have you heard about unicorn unicorn hona zaruri nahi a company can be a small company as well with a few thousand or few lakhs of turnover as well that is absolutely fine abhi aap bol rahe ho reliance industries ko jo accounting standard apply ho raha hai all of them will also apply to a small company set up by a small person so you are making it very very tedious and as a result there are certain levels which are specified and if a question comes it is very very likely that a question comes from this section agar ye part se question aaya introduction to accounting standards and applicability of accounting standards it is highly likely it is going to come from the section we are about to study so icai has given you it has segregated entities into four levels level 1 2 3 and 
दिस इज फॉर नॉन कॉर्पोरेट एंटिटीज फॉर कॉर्पोरेट एंटिटीज मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कंपनी अफेयर हैज गिवन जस्ट टू सेग्रीगेशन सो ओवर हियर इफ आई लुक एट द सेग्रीगेशन 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 बिटवीन लेट से कॉर्पोरेट एंटिटीज कैन यू एंड कॉर्पोरेट एंटिटीज वुड बी लाइक कंपनीज for companies the segregation is smc smc small and medium corporation and non smc what is an smc this is for company level okay what is an smc an entity which is not listed any of its security should not be listed or it should not be in the process of listing Like in Zomato, अच्छा are you aware Zomato is listed on the stock exchange? Can Zomato be called as an SMC? No. Why? Because it is listed. But can Swiggy possibly? As we speak today, at a later date it will be listed. But as we speak today, Swiggy listed? No. So can Swiggy be an SMC? Possibly. First of all, for you to be an SMC, your security should not be listed. Are you listing so much? Stock exchange like BSC, NSC. it should not be listed or it should not be in the process of listing swiggy is actually in the process of listing to nahi chalega what do you mean process of listing in law you will study prospectus red herring prospectus this and that aapne listing karne ke liye filing kar diya you have not yet listed on the exchange but you are then in the process of listing for an smc you should not be listed or beech mein or aata or your revenue Also called as turnover, also called as sales revenue should be less than or equal to less than or equal to two fifty crores. You need to know these numbers. It's a classic, classic MCQ question because they will ask you a particular case and say, "Can I tell you what is SMC? Is it or not? MCQ. Pe. So over here, revenue should be less than or equal to two fifty crores or the loans or borrowings as per the last audited balance sheet date should be less than or equal to 50 crores are we clear with this or it should not be a subsidiary when you study law you will study a definition of a private company have you heard about a private company there will be certain limits they will tell you share capital cannot be greater than this number of members cannot be greater than this but the definition of a private and a company public company will have a public company a subsidiary of a so a private company which is a subsidiary of a public company will be also treated as public company same yahan pe ganit hai you might be a small corporation but aapka parent kon hai tata steel limited now tata steel is not an smc टाटा स्टील इज अ लिस्टेड कंपनी नहीं यू आर अ सब्सिडरी ऑफ टाटा स्टील हाँ तो मैं तो एसएमसी मेरा 250 करोड़ से लेस है अच्छा इस सब्सिडरी सिगल सेपरेट लीगल एंटिटी सब्सिडरी समझते हैं इस सब्सिडरी सेपरेट लीगल एंटिटी का पेरेंट है सेपरेट लीगल एंटिटी यस हावेवर इफ यू आर द चाइल्ड इफ यू आर द बेबी ऑफ टाटा स्टील विच बाई द वे इज नॉट एन एस देन यू आर ऑल्सो नॉट एन एस आर वी क्लियर विद दिस सो ओवर यू आर नॉट सब्सिडरी ऑफ अ नॉन एस so help me with the limits okay for you to be an smc can you be listed no can you be a subsidiary of an smc no acha now the limits two limits you have to tell me turnover should be less than or equal to sorry 250 crores as per the last audited balance sheet or last balance sheet second borrowings should be less than or equal to 50 crores third profit should be less than or equal to नहीं कुछ भी तुक्का नहीं मानेगा दर इज नो कंडीशन ऑफ प्रॉफिट इट इज ओनली टू कंडीशन वन इज अ कंडीशन ऑफ टर्न ओवर वन इज अ कंडीशन ऑफ लोन देर इज नो प्रॉफिट कितनी बार कंफ्यूजन के लिए प्रॉफिट एसेट कुछ भी दे दिया विल से इंस्टीट्यूट विल कलर योर माइंड विद दैट दे विल से कंपनी विद टर्न ओवर ऑफ फॉर एग्जाम्पल हंड्रेड करोर्स बोरोइंग ऑफ लेट से फाइव करोर्स एंड एसेट्स ऑफ वन थाउजेंड करोर्स अब और वन थाउजेंड करोर एसेट का कोई क्राइटेरिया ही नहीं है यार लेट दी एसेट भी वन थाउजेंड करोर वन लैख करोड़ और देव नॉट गिवन यू एनी क्राइटेरिया यू आर स्टडिंग अ लॉ लॉ मीन्स यू हैव टू अप्लाइड वर बैटिंग आप ऐसा अपने खुद से नहीं कर सकते सो दे विल टेल यू दे विल थ्रो यू विल से हाँ मेरे को कुछ याद आ रहा है टू फिफ्टी करोर अपने चिपका दिया हाँ इट्स नॉट टू फिफ्टी करोर किसका टू फिफ्टी करोर है टर्न ओवर 
not anything, not asset, not anything. It is turnover has to be less than or equal to 250 crores. Let your asset base be anything. Let your net worth be anything. It does not really matter. Are we clear with this? So, for it to be an SMC, these are the conditions. Now, you guys tell me if you are a standard setter, aap legislator, aap parliament mein better, aap ne, you have to define a non SMC. How will you define it? Negatively defined. It's a very common negative definition. Negative definition means I will not define the SMC. I will say every entity which is not an SMC as per this definition becomes a non SMC. So, I don't have to define it again. In fact, law of current and non current asset SI defined. Have you heard about current and non current? Current they define it should be within 12 months, this, that. Non current they say everything which is not current becomes non current. It's called a negative definition. Negative definition means I will define one of the two and for the others I will say okay, no, no, no. If something is not this by default it is non-SMC. Are we clear with this? So, over here if I were to look at a non-SMC, non-SMC is every entity which is not an SMC will be taken as non-SMC. No sir, why are we doing all of this Why are we doing all of this headache? Right now, we are just doing basic introduction. We will come back to this later in our syllabus. But you will study all of those 27 accounting standards. What do you guys think? For a non... Achha, which is a bigger company? SMC or non-SMC? Sorry? Non-SMC is a bigger entity. Which means, what do you guys think? Will all accounting standards apply to non-SMCs? But can I say SMC is a smaller entity? Which means, will all accounting standards apply to SMCs? No, you will be given relaxations. There will be so many standards. For example, I just, you have not studied, so you will understand. There is a standard called as AS3, cash flow statement. You will say small companies don't have to do cash flow statement. There is a seg standard AS17, segment reporting. Like Mahindra and Mandra, you have heard Mahindra has so many businesses. It makes tractors, it makes cars, it has a club Mahindra, it has a tech Mahindra, software, it has an NBFC, it has so many businesses. So, it will have to prepare a segment report. But if I am a small company, I don't have to give segment wise data. It is okay. Well, they leave it. If you are a company, that's fine. You might have 3-4 segments, you don't have to prepare a segment report. So, there are a lot of standards. Consolidations, you have heard Have you heard about consolidation? In law, there is a concept, lifting of corporate wheel. Have you heard about this? A shareholder and entity are two separate entities. However, sometimes you can lift the corporate wheel. Like ideally, if there is Reliance Industries Limited and Reliance Geo Limited, dono alag companies. Are they same or are they different legally? Different. However, Reliance owns let's say 70% or for simplicity 100% of Geo Limited. Can I say for all practical purposes Reliance Industry is limited and Reliance Geo Limited one and the same. So, consolidation lifts that corporate wheel. It says you are parent, you are subsidiary. Legally they are different. Actually you are one and the same. Prepare a statement as if you are one and the same. Consolidate financial statements. Tata still listen to 600 subsidiaries, 600 subsidiaries. I will think as if it is one and the same. All of these 600 companies or Tata Steel, it is one and the same. However, I will also prepare a separate financial statement. I will say Tata Steel separate legal entity. I will also prepare consolidated financial statements where I say Tata Steel and its subsidiary one and the same. Are you understanding it? If you are a chotu company, SMC, I have to say that you have to do consolidation. is very difficult. At CA Inter, CA Final, it's a difficult chapter. People say always consolidation ka chapter. So, consolidation even for a chartered accountant is a difficult thing. Now, if you have a little SMC ko consolidation, karwa rahe, they will give you relaxation. Chalo, don't consolidate. Don't prepare cash flow statement. Don't prepare segment report. All of these relaxations will be given to whom? Will they be given to SMCs or non-SMCs? Smaller the entity, more the relaxation. Bigger the entity, more the compliance it has to do. Are we clear with this? So, there will be a lot of relaxations. Which relaxations? We will review, read this once. But obviously, you will not be able to remember this now. Before you do the science, you will say AS3, AS7. You will go, what is AS17? You don't even know. Once you do AS17, come back to this, you will be able to do it. 
विच एवर द डिफिकल्ट स्टैंडर्ड इंस्टीट्यूट इज गिवन यू रिलैक्सेशन आपको जो भी डिफिकल्ट लगा माइंड में वो बोलने के एसएमसी को नहीं लगेगा आप पूछे हाँ ये तो इजी है यार फिक्स एसेट है इन्वेंट्री है आपको इजी लगा ओके एसएमसी विल अप्लाइड जनरली इफ यू कॉन्ट रिमेम्बर इट इफ यू फाइंड समथिंग एज डिफिकल्ट एसएमसी विल आल्सो फाइंड इट एज डिफिकल्ट इट विल बी अ रिलैक्सेशन जनरली इफ यू फाइंड समथिंग इजी ओके देन एस के लिए भी वो लग जाएगा आर वी क्लियर विद दिस जनरल सिंप्लीफाइड एप्लीकेशन नाउ दिस इज फॉर कॉर्पोरेट एंटिटीज For non-corporate entities, a lot of students say that what is even the use of doing this? Non-corporate entities do they have to follow accounting standards? Well, generally no. However, in certain cases, if they want to get their account certified, audited by a chartered accountant, then they will have to follow accounting standards. So, when we look at non-corporate entities, for example, firms, partnership firms, or let us say, uh, 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 HUF sets, etc., whatever it is, here. can the ministry of company affairs notify anything to for non corporate entities kyu na bol raha ministry of company affairs it has its jurisdiction over companies it does not have jurisdiction over non corporate entities so this smc non smc definition is given by mc a ministry of company affairs whereas for non corporate entities icai has given a segregation what is the segregation they have divided everything into four levels there is level 1 2 3 and 4 this is classic mcq smc non smc level 1 1 2 3 4 this is classic mc again what will be level 1 category entities level 1 category entities are those entities which are either listed or they have a turnover of greater than 250 crores okay let me just make it over here it's a little more space level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 this is applicable for what for corporate entities or non corporate entities non corporate let's say you have a note one over here and you summarize all of this in note one okay if it is listed it is going to be which level level 1 level 2 3 4 have to be unlisted no matter how big or small you are if you are listed you will go into level 1 are we clear with this so over here level 1 category recently you might i don't know whether you track the news or not recently aajkal abhi ipo ka craze chal raha hai anything left right center gets first funded a few weeks back there was a company called as resourceful auto it was a delhi company with around 8 employees usme se do teen accounting mein ek aadh hr aur do showroom the sirf they got bids worth 4700 crores लोग अभी अभी दो चार दिन पहले देर वॉज अ बॉस पैकेजिंग करके कंपनी अहमदाबाद का कंपनी एकदम पुराना छोटा सा आपको इधर बाजू में जैसा शॉप है वैसा ही कंपनी उसको भी अच्छा खासा दो ढाई हजार करोड़ का बीड़ा गया अभी आईपीओ का क्रेज चल रहा है पीपल आर गोइंग लेफ्ट राइट सेंटर ओवर आईपीओ ओके सो वी आर वॉट वी आर ट्राइंग टू से इफ यू आर लिस्टेड वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू लुक एट योर साइज यू माइट बी अ टाइनी फाइव सिक्स करोड़ कंपनी सो बी इट इफ यू आर लिस्टेड यू आर लेवल वन अब पब्लिक के पैसे के साथ पब्लिक का पैसा इन्वॉल्व होता है लिस्टेड कंपनी में इफ यू आर लिस्टेड कंपनी यू हैव टू डिस्क्लोज ऑल अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स यू आर लेवल वन कैटेगरी मेरा टर्न डज नॉट मैटर योर योर लोन्स आर लेस डज नॉट मैटर इफ यू आर लिस्टेड यू आर ऑलवेज गोइंग टू गो इन लेवल वन इफ यू आर लिस्टेड यू आर ऑलवेज गोइंग टू बी नॉन एस एम सी आर वी क्लियर विद लिस्टेड देन साइज डज नॉट मैटर ओनली बिकॉज नाउ पब्लिक इज गोइंग टू इन्वेस्ट मनी यू विल स्टार्ट योर आर्टिकल शिप आप पांच दस हजार रुपया कमाओगे फिर आपको तभी स्टॉक मार्केट का भूत चढ़ेगा यू से नहीं 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 मर्निंग सम मनी आई वांट टू इन्वेस्ट इन स्टॉक मार्केट यू सो पीपल यू माइट आफ्टर क्वालिफाइंग यू लेव लॉट ऑफ मनी बट टिल दैट टाइम आर्टिकलशिप में कुछ खास पैसा नहीं मिलता बट कुछ तो मिलता है वी आर बेटर देन वॉट वी आर इट करंटली इन विच केस इफ यू सिट एंड इन्वेस्ट नाउ से इज वर्ड देर लाइक के बॉस ये तो छोटे छोटे लोगों का पैसा लग रहा है यार इन प्राइवेट कंपनी ओनर का पैसा लगता है पब्लिक का पैसा नहीं लग जाता है यार एंड हेंस द मोस्ट स्ट्रिंजेंट रूल्स विल ऑलवेज अप्लाई टू लिस्टेड कंपनीज एवरी स्ट्रिंजेंट रूल विल अप्लाई टू अ लिस्टेड कंपनी इफ यू आर लिस्टेड यू आर ऑलवेज लेवल वन कैटेगरी 
or you are non smc are we clear with this or let us say you look at turnover limit or what was the next limit ek tha turnover what was next loans or borrowings this can also include public deposits any kind of loans so over here what what was the turnover limit for you to become a non smc ne 250 yani 1 second law hai dekho mcq mein aap kisi mein bhi phas sakte ho exactly 250 kidhar jayega borderline is less than 250 you know more than 250 you know borderline kidhar gaya 250 exact net worth Uh, exactly sorry smc perfect remember the law says in excess of 250 crores so level 1 jane ke liye it has to be turnover in excess of 250 crores borderline case 250 ek level niche aayega are we clear with this greater than 250 crores loans greater than sorry 50 crores are we clear with this acha in your 11 12 have you heard about the gp geometric progression yes geometric progression is a common ratio okay we'll come to that level 2 mein kya hai the same thing will come between 50 so greater than 50 but less than equal to 250 so let me put it as greater than 50 here obviously if it is greater than 250 to to level 1 ban jayega so you're saying The law says between 50 and 250. Yeah, but about 250, so I don't know. It is level one, and hence we are just saying greater than 50. This is greater than 10. Then this is greater than 10. This is greater than 2. And level four. How will you define a level four? Everything which is not level one, two, or three will negatively be defined to be level four. अच्छा वाई डिड आई डिस्कस अबाउट जीपी आउट ऑफ नो वेर टू इंटू फाइव कम्स टू वॉट टेन टेन इंटू फाइव कम्स टू वॉट फिफ्टी फिफ्टी इंटू फाइव कम्स टू वॉट टू फिफ्टी डू दिस थ्री नंबर रिंग अ बेल फोर नंबर वन टू थ्री फोर डू द रिंग अ बेल ये सो आपको याद क्या रखना है आपको याद रखना है टू करोड़ The moment you remember two crores, everything into five, into five, into five, करते जाने का two into five, ten, ten into five, fifty, fifty into five, two fifty. So when you remember the limits, and as of now, आप मस्त मुंडी हिलाए हो. Exam में याद नहीं आता ये सब. So many things that you have revised the day before the exam, you forget these limits unless you have a pattern in your mind. आधा चीज pattern पे चलता. Even if you forget, if you have a pattern in your mind, you will be able to write in your exams. तो आप बोलोगे कि यार लिमिट क्या है 250 एंड 50 उसके बाद एक बार आपको वो याद है अच्छा 250 के बाद डिवाइड बाय 5 दैट इज 50 50 डिवाइड बाय 5 इज 10 10 डिवाइड बाय 5 इज 2 एंड ऑफ स्टोरी सो इफ आई वांट टू लुक एट द लिमिट्स फॉर लेवल 1 कंपनी टेल मी व्हाट इज द टर्नओवर लिमिट फटाफट बोलेंगे 250 व्हाट इज द लोन लिमिट 50 लेवल 2 एंटिटीज व्हाट इज द टर्नओवर लिमिट 50 व्हाट इज द लोन लिमिट 10 लेवल 3 एंटिटीज टर्नओवर लिमिट 10 what is a uh, 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 loan limit 2 and how do you define a non smc well every one other than level 1 2 3 uh, non smc is every one other than smc yahan pe level 4 will be every one other than level 1 2 3 will be in level 4 are we clear with this everyone okay obviously that same principle also applies of Not being a subsidiary. If you are a subsidiary of level one company, you become level one. If you are a subsidiary of level two company, you become level two. If you are a subsidiary of level three company, you will become level three. Then, भले आप level four हो उससे फर्क नहीं पड़ता. If you are a subsidiary, you take the color of your parent. Are we clear with this? Obviously, your limit you will see. But otherwise, other than that, you may be level four. Your parent is level one. Then you are also level. Are we clear with this? Yes. Okay. So this is, I would say, slightly important from an MCQ standpoint. If something comes in the exam, I'm reasonably certain it will come from this and this section only. If you open the institute's study material, you will see around 15 or 15-20 pages on introduction of accounting standards, around 15-20 pages on applicability of accounting standards. The most important thing is this part. Other than that, general knowledge is there. कि आईसीआई डज दिस आईसीआई डज दैट अकाउंटिंग में ये सब आपको कोई नहीं पूछने वाला वी हैव डिस्कस बेसिक के बाय अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड बोर्ड नाफरा दिस दैट बट यूजुअली इट विल नॉट कम इन योर एग्जाम्स एग्जाम में कुछ आता है तो यही आएगा आई कैन से दिस इज रीजनेबल अमाउंट ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस यस ओके सो इफ यू हैव टाइम एंड लीजर देन यू कैन रिफर दोज पेजेस बट आपके पास लीजर में और बहुत चीज करने को है सो यू कैन 
probably focus on this section from an exam perspective. Are we clear with this? Any problems here? Okay, now let us say you were a non SMC. Now, this is where things might be a little tricky. Abhi level 1, level 2, level 3, chhod dete abhi main SMC. In my opinion, this is more important. Why? Because companies are here. Your entire course is going to teach you company accounts, partnership, ka ek bhi chapter nahi. dissolution, admission, retirement, nothing is there. So, they are largely going to ask you about companies. All accounting standards generally are mandatory to companies. So, this is more important. I mean, but that logic also applies to this level 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 as well. <coughs> Let us say you were an, you were not an SMC. Will you get any exemptions, any relaxations? No. Will you have to follow all accounting standards? Yes. However, is it possible aapka business kam hote ja rahe? Is it possible the size of your business is reducing? You earlier had a fairly healthy turnover. But you were, for example, a company in a slightly outdated business. You have Kodak Films. Suna. Kodak Films used to manufacture wo khachak karke awa jata na. the actual physical films. Te te. Now with phones, digital cameras coming in, people very rarely are actually taking out physical copies. So I might be Kodak, my turnover might be very high. But abhi mera turnover kam hoye ja raha hai yaar. It has now fallen below 250 crores. It has fallen let's say to 200 crores. Will I, let's say my loans, I am a debt free company. There is zero loans. My turnover is 200 crores. I am not listed. Now am I an SMC? Yes or no? Kodak was there in existence for the last 100 years. 100 years se kafi bada company tha. It was not an SMC. However now, slowly slowly kam hote 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 now we have reached <coughs> you have reached for example a level of uh, level of let us say 2 crores or uh, 200 crores do you become an SMC are yes or no yes. you become an SMC now if you become an SMC will you still have to follow all accounting standards or you get relaxations you do get relaxations however Kodak will not get relaxations the law says for you to get relaxations, if you were a non SMC earlier and you become an SMC now, you should be an SMC for two consecutive years and only then will you get a relaxation. If I start my company Benchmarks Academy Private Limited, I was a non SMC, I was a small company. Tha. So, for me, from the very first year, I will get relaxation. However, Kodak was almost always a big company. Now it is becoming a small company. The law says no, no. Let us see whether it continues to remain a small company. Sir, aisa kaise? For example, abhi beech mein aapko dhyan raga, COVID hua tha. In COVID lockdown happened, in lockdown kaafi company ka turnover. Let's say you are a gaming parlor. Aapka turnover kam ho gaya. No, but that was one of blip year. It was not a consistent down, down, down each year. It was a one or two years where things were going bad. It was a blip for one year. That does not mean ab SMC ban gaya. Maybe because of COVID, one, two years, we had a bad time after that. Tar, apka ka sa chal and as a law says, no, if you were a non SMC earlier, you were preparing your accounts using all accounting standards. You know how to prepare accounts using all accounting standards. Even if you become an SMC, you will not get relaxation. Classic MCQ, you will not get a relaxation because you will trap you 250, 250. But aapko case mein aaya nahi. Aapko aaya, you are a non SMC who always had a higher turnover, but in the current year, due to so and so limits, your turnover is 200 crores. Your loan are fine, hey, you will jump. Uh, uh, yeah. Are you an SMC? Answer is yes. Will you get relaxation? Answer is no. Aap samaj pa rahe ho? So, over here, when you move from, for example, a non SMC. to an SMC, you will be called a SMC only if your turnover is less than 250 crores, if your loans are less than uh, uh, 10 crores, you will be called an SMC only, but relaxation from specified AS only after how many years? 
टू कॉन्जिक्यूटिव नॉट एनी टू रैंडम इयर्स यू कैनॉट से हा फाइव इयर्स अर्लियर एंड नाउ नो नो टू कॉन्जिक्यूटिव इयर्स If two consecutive years have gone by, after that you will get relaxation. Am I clear with this? Are yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Relaxation from which accounting science? We'll just read that for the time. At a later stage, once you do those accounting science, you'll be able to kind of correlate it slightly better. Are things clear in your mind till now? Yes. Okay. So let us review the applicability section on your velocity book. applicability of accounting standards <coughs> it's a small topic we will put this into the tire 3 category topic of importance tire 3 category tire 3 would be least important tire 1 being the most important applicability of accounting standards in the heading write down and introduction to accounting standards <coughs> okay <clears throat> so let us review this accounting st standards are drafted <coughs> by the accounting standards board that is asb of the icai and are notified by the ministry of company affairs they are drafted by the asb accounting standards board of icai if you want you can also write down over here in consultation write down in consultation with <coughs> national financial reporting authority into bracket nafra earlier there was no nafra just for your knowledge but recent times i am not sure whether you are tracking the news or not a lot of cas are getting involved in unnecessary scandals and everything aapne byju's ke bare mein suna now byju's ke pehle auditor was deloitte deloitte said no i cannot i don't think ye sab theek nahi ho raha deloitte re resigned then there was a firm called as bdo BDO came. BDO also resigned. There were a lot of other companies like Reliance, etc. Reliance, Anil Ambani, wala where CS got entangled. They got debarred as well. So then the government says, "Nee, meko CS ke upar bhi ek leash rakhna padega." And hence Nafra came in. Earlier ICI audit wagera mein jo karna hai. What used to happen? Just for our understanding is, agar koi institute ka hi banda pakda gaya hai in such लाइक रिलायंस अनिल अंबानी का आपको ध्यान रहेगा अर्लियर दे आर वेरी सक्सेसफुल कंपनीज बट ही गॉट कॉट इन सम फ्रॉड्स एंड एवरीथिंग नाउ इफ इंस्टीट्यूट डिसिप्लिनरी कमिटी इज ओनली देर दे विल से नो यार इफ आई डू अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स आवाज ज्यादा किया तो हमारे प्रोफेशन का नाम खराब हो सकता है सब रफा दफा कर देंगे सो देन दे सेड दैट प्रॉबेबली गवर्नमेंट सेड दैट ओके वी ट्रस्ट द इंस्टीट्यूट बट एट द सेम टाइम वी वॉन्ट एन आउटसाइडर दैट इज अ गवर्नमेंट टू ओवर सी ऑल ऑफ दिस so nafra few people from the institute also said few people from the government also said and hence institute now icai aapke upar kafi dadagiri chal sakta hai but other than that probably now it is now going to do everything in consultation with nafra only national financial regulatory authority yes application of accounting standards to corporate and non corporate entities acha over here we have just mentioned to corporate entities like companies it is mandatory section 129 from accounts perspective not important but law perspective it is important section 129 read with section 133 of the companies act requires all specified companies to follow accounting standards so they don't say ke itna size utna size they say all company have to follow accounting standards for non corporate entities firms hf proprietor it is optional in case a firm decides to get its accounts audited by a ca then it will need to prepare its statements as per as otherwise it is not needed point 3 company segregates companies act segregates comes into two categories in 
with respect to their size that is on the next page small and medium companies smcs and non small and medium companies not listed or not under the process of listing what is listed zomato is listed what is process of listing swiggy's process of listing they find a prospectus revenue less than 250 crores during the immediately preceding year and loans less than 50 crores at any time during the immediate preceding year and should not be a parent or a subsidiary of a non smc <coughs> are we clear with this if an entity does not meet any conditions for being classified as an smc it will be treated as a non smc so it's a negative definition point one in case company is classified as an smc it gets full or partial exemption from the application of the following accounting standards which standards 3 which is cash flow statement is ka full exemption milta 15 employee benefits partial exemption 17 full exemption 19 so there are various standards I will not go into so this is the list once you do the standards you will 100% remember with numbers ke sa standard kya hai but these are the standards where you get a lot of exemptions. Point two, this is an important point. Point two, in case a non SMC subsequently becomes an SMC, it will be entitled to the above exemptions or relaxation. It will not be entitled to the above exemptions or relaxation unless the company remains an SMC for two consecutive years. Two consecutive years after that, they can claim a relaxation till that they may be an SMC. But they cannot claim a relaxation. Aapko, aapke annual report mein, in notes, you have to mention whether you are an SMC or not. If you are an SMC, you have to mention. If you are an SMC and achha, remember these are exemptions. Like this is a statement AS3 is on cash flow, AS17 is on segment reporting. Here I am an SMC. But I want to prepare cash flow statement. Can I prepare? Yes, aapko relaxation diya hai. But if you don't want to take that, it is like saying in a car seat belt. If a driver does not wear a seat belt, can the police fine you? But let us say in general, agar piche ke seat pe kisi ne seat belt nahi pehna, can they fine you generally? No. But if you wear it, is that a violation? No, you can very well wear it. Aapko, it is recommended ke bhai aap pehno. But nahi pehna to violation nahi hai. In a similar way, cash flow statement, segment reporting, you don't want to prepare. You are an SMC, achha, don't prepare. But you are not prohibited. You are given an exemption. Which means if you don't want to prepare, you don't prepare. But I want to prepare, sir. Can I prepare? Yes, I can very well prepare. So, if I am preparing, I will have to give a disclosure in the notes that I am an SMC. So, the following standards are exempted. However, I have decided to apply these standards and present. So, reader is aware. Are we clear with this? Okay. IC has also classified non-corporate entities into four levels. For granting exemption or relaxation from the app from the application of certain AS as described above. Level 1. Achha, over here for simplistically, okay. Is kum kya bolte? Level 1 is the big entities. Level 2 are the medium. Level 1 kum large bolte, okay. Level 1 is called as large. Level 2 is called as medium. Level 3 is called as small and level 4 is called as micro. Have you heard the words MSME, micro, small and medium industries, MSME? Yes, sir. So, level 1 are the large ones, level 2 are the medium ones, level 3 are the small ones, level 4 are the micro ones. Okay. So, level 1, who is listed or in the process of listing? The moment you are listed, no matter your turnover, no matter your loans, you will be level 1. Revenue greater than, achha, sign dekho, it is not greater than equal to, it is greater than 250 crores, loans greater than 50 crores and parent and subsidiary of level 1 entity is also level 1 entity. Level 2 is between 50 and 250, L loans are 10 to 50, level 3 is between 10 to 50 of revenue and loans between 2 to so basically this 50 will go over here this 
10 will go over here and so on. Are we clear with this? So from an easy remembrance perspective, you will say 250 divided by 5 is 50 divided by 5 is 10 divided by 5 is 2. You remember these four numbers. It's a GP of 5 with the first term of 2. 2 into 5 that is 10, 10 into 5 that is 50, 50 into 5 that is 250. Are we clear with this? And then non-corporate entities which are not level 1, 2 or 3 will become level 4. Key point, the guidance under Companies Act. Okay, now there is another point over here. Sometimes it might happen that the Companies Act that you will study in paper 2 and there is accounting standards that you will study in paper 1. Sometimes Companies Act might require you to do a certain thing and accounting standards might require you to do something else. What is more powerful, the Companies Act or the accounting standards? Companies Act. Remember, Act always overrides the standards. This is just given by the ICAI and approved, but Companies Act to banai as an act. Accounting standards act karke kuch bhi nahi. It's accounting standards. So, in the level of hierarchy, Companies Act will override. So, if there is a conflict, we have very rare conflicts, but kabi kabar kya ho jata hai? Like in your life also, you change something. Yeah, but apne ek book mein change kya, dusre book mein change karna bhul gaye. So, like in Companies Act, they change something, but they forget to change something in accounting standards. Now, you are applying, you say, Are Companies Act tells you that you have to follow this method. Accounting standards tells you you cannot follow this method. No, Companies Act will override the accounting standards because it is a law. A law will override general standards. So, if a conflict arises between the Companies Act and accounting standards, it will be Companies Act that will override. The guidance under Companies Act, that is a law, will override the guidance given by ICAI and hence level 1, 2 and 3 classification does not apply to companies. The above guidance will only apply to non-corporate entities which have optionally decided to apply accounting standards. <coughs> Are we clear with this? Yes. So today we will have a slightly smaller session. Uh, we will take a small 5 minute breather now. Uh, maybe the first two days we will have slightly smaller session otherwise then we will have a session from I think 1.30 to 5 or something and uh, and then you will have a proper break at 5 o'clock. Okay? So right now uh, we will have a, today a session till 4 only a slightly shorter session. We will take a small 5 minute breather then we will go to the numericals of this and then take it further. Okay? Okay, so let us review these questions. We will go to applicability of accounting standards. This is question number one. These are most are theory questions. Wherever required in numerical terms, we will solve it separately. But here, to the extent required, we can just even note down the summaries. XYZ limited with a turnover of 50 crores. Achai, this is XYZ limited, which means company or non-company? Company. company. XYZ limited with a turnover of 50 crores during the previous year and borrowings of 1 crore during any time in the previous year wants to avail the exemptions available in the adoption of accounting standards applicable to the companies for the year ended 31st March 2011 or any year as a case maybe advise the management on the exemptions that are available as per company's accounting standard rules. So what do you guys think? What is the turnover over here? 50 crores. Is that less than the limit? What is the borrowings here? Is it less than the limit? By the way, what are the limits here? 250 and 50. Both of these are lower and as a result, can I be classified, can XYZ be classified as an SMC? And if XYZ is classified as an SMC, it will get exemption either full or partial from specified accounting standards. Are we clear with this? Now, how do I answer such questions in the exam if they come up? MCQ other obviously we don't have to give an explanation, but if it comes as a case based question for around let's say three or four marks, how do I answer? Part one of your solution should be to explain the law. Explain the law in your own words. You do not re need to reproduce 100 percent. You don't need to reproduce institute language to explain the law. Second, you connect the law to the given case and then conclude like what will the answer over here look like 
the answer over here will look like as per notified rules a company will be an smc if sub point 1 it is listed or in the process of listing or sub point 2 it has a turnover greater than or equal to greater than 250 crore less than 250 crores or a borrowings of less than 50 crores and it is not a subsidiary of an smc so we've explained the law it's a lamba lamba legal flashy language not needed you can write in your own words second is connect the law to the given case second paragraph you will start in the given case comma xyz has a turnover of 50 crores into bracket that is less than 250 crores bracket close and borrowings of 1 crore into bracket that is less than 50 crores bracket close and hence xyz is an smc conclude what are they asking you advise management on the exemptions that are available since xyz is an smc for example it will get no partial or full exemption from specified accounting standards if you remember the standards you can note that down otherwise you can just say specified accounting standards one solution we will write in our own words right now and after that for other similar questions you can either refer the printed solutions or give reference to this solution okay so write down question one question one as per question one you will first explain the law question one as per company accounting standard rules as per company accounting standard rules comma an smc an smc would fulfill the below criteria sub point 1 not listed slash not in the process of listing sub point 2 Achha, we forgot discussing that but it is not relevant from a student standpoint like banks or insurance companies are also they also take public money whether they are listed or not listed banks or insurance companies are also never SMCs so the bank is not chote hote nahi, but nevertheless sub point to banks slash insurance companies sub point 3 Companies having turnover Companies having turnover of less than two fifty CR Next, companies having loan less than fifty CR. Next line, not a subsidiary not a subsidiary of not subsidiary of Next 
नॉन एस एम सी नेक्स्ट पैराग्राफ इन द गिवन केस कॉम इन द गिवन केस कॉम इन द गिवन केस कॉम एक्स वाई जेड डज नॉट अपियर टू बी लिस्टेड and is not a bank slash insurance company is not a bank slash insurance company full stop however comma it has a turnover of 50 crores it has a turnover of 50 crores into bracket which is less than 250 crores bracket closed and loans of and loans of 1 crore into bracket less than 50 crores bracket closed and hence and hence xyz limited is an smc is an smc last paragraph so we will conclude so first we explain the law connecting the law to the given case and then conclusion since xyz is an smc comma it can claim it can claim full slash partial exemption it can claim full slash partial exemption from the application from the application of specified accounting standards specified accounting standards are we clear with this so this is like a sample solution if you see the printed solution you might see some technical language i am not used technical language i have kept it really simple you can write it in your own words you do not need to reproduce this but this is a flow of your solving are we clear with this yes okay next you go to question number 2 now a company question number 2 a company was classified as a non smc in 11 12 great in the year 12 13 it has been classified as an smc is that possible yes if its turnover loans fell the management desires to avail the exemption or relaxation available for smcs in the year 12 13 acha is it an smc in the year 12 13 yes however the accountant of the company does not agree with the same comment can i take the benefits no the accountant does not agree with the same is a contention of the accountant correct yes you cannot claim why because for you to claim the benefits of an smc if you are a non smc earlier you need to be an smc for two consecutive years are you an smc for two consecutive years no and as a result you will not get the relaxations though you are an smc are we clear with this from tomorrow if possible get at least two colored pens one is your standard blue pen and one is probably another red or some other pen if you have to write something as important and carry a particular distinctive color highlighter jo aap use karoge for things that i will mark so what i will do is i will tell you certain things to be marked in the question and the impact to be marked in the solution so jab aap last day pe pad rahe ho 
देर मे बी क्वेश्चन यहाँ पे सिर्फ एक ही नया एडजस्टमेंट नो आई डोंट नीड टू ऑन द लास्ट रिफर दी एंटायर क्वेश्चन सो वॉट डू आई डू आई हाईलाइट दैट क्वेश्चन वाइल प्रिपेरिंग राइट नाउ एंड आई ऑल्सो हाईलाइट इन इट्स इम्पैक्ट इन द सोल्यूशन सो ऑन द लास्ट डे इफ इट्स अ फुल क्वेश्चन विच इज इंपॉर्टेंट मैं क्वेश्चन को ही हाईलाइट कर दूंगा इफ इट देर इज अ क्वेश्चन जहां पे एक ही एडजस्टमेंट दो एडजस्टमेंट इंपॉर्टेंट आई हाईलाइट दैट बट ब्रिंग अ हाईलाइटर विच इज यूनिक टू वॉट आई एम टेलिंग अदरवाइज क्या करोगे वेन यू रिवाइजिंग आप सब कुछ हाईलाइट मार देते हो You you underline everything that you can do with any other highlighter. Let's say you bring a highlighter which is very unique and try to use that whenever I tell you to highlight specified stuff. So आपको लास्ट डे पे काफी आसान पड़ेगा आर वी क्लियर विद ओके सो ओवर ह्योर वी कैन राइट अ समर इज सोल्यूशन ओवर ह्योर कैन नॉट क्लेम SMC exemptions since since company was earlier non SMC and is not smc for two consecutive years cannot claim smc exemption since company was earlier a non smc and is not an smc for two consecutive years are we clear with this yes okay so this is question number 2 so over here we have clearly concluded cannot avail the exemptions or relaxations available to smc for the year 1230 okay now question 3 and 4 uh, no 3 and 5 are more theory questions remember accounting standards we have not discussed this per se explicitly but it can come so accounting standards are applicable to whom they are applicable to entities who are let's say having some business industrial some commercial if it is a pure not for profit organization if it is a pure not for profit organization accounting standards are not intended to cover that unke liye wo net profit calculation etc is not relevant so if i am a pure pure not for profit organization in which case accounting standards will not apply to me however even if some part of my activities has any business objective then even if majority of my objectives are not for profit i will be covered under accounting standards i'll again repeat like you have let's say organizations like iscon have you heard about iscon now iscon might be a not for profit organization i'm not very sure but let's say it is it might be a not for profit organization largely its activities it, it does for some religious purpose for example however it also sells if you have been to is iscon juhu etc it also sells some food products at market prices in which case it sells books food products at market prices in which case does it have some business involved and hence can it be considered to be a pure not for profit no in which case can accounting standards be applicable if it is specified and required under the law yes so for accounting standards to apply there has to be some business if it is entirely not for a profit then it will not be applicable but if there is some business then accounting standards if applicable will apply are we clear with this so over here that is question number 3 an organization whose objects are charitable or religious like iscon believes that accounting standards are not applicable since only a small proportion of its activities are business in nature comment will as be applicable will as be applicable yes or no yes as yes. applicable since there is some business okay you will highlight this sentence when you revise exclusion of an enterprise from applicability of accounting standards should be permissible 
only if no part of the activity of such enterprise is commercial, industry or business. Only if no part of it. Even if some part of it is business, then accounting standards would apply. Are we clear with this? So, when you are revising, you will just look at this line. So, you remember ki by TK, this is one exclusion, which is on application of accounting standards. Otherwise, so yes, will apply everywhere. Question number 4. A company, achha, there is something known as RTP. RTP is revisionary test papers. What you have tried to do is you have incorporated sums from everywhere. From your study material, from your RTPs, from your past exams, from your mock test papers. So, beyond this, if you do this properly, you don't need to review anything else. Uh, it covers everything that is needed for your preparation. Question 4. A company with a turnover of 225 crores. Achha, sabse pehle toh, we have to see whether it is company or non-corporate. It is a company with a turnover of 225 crores and a borrowing of 51 crores. During the year ended 31st March 2021, wants to avail the exemptions available in the adoption of accounting standards applicable to companies for the year ended 31st March 2021. Advise management on whether the exemptions are available as per the accounting standard rules. Are they available? Yes or no? You are saying no, why? Borrowings are greater than the prescribed limit. So, your theory will be similar to question 1. You will first say as per the company's uh, uh, accounting standard rules, SMCs are, you will mention everything. However, in the given case, your borrowings are greater than the limit of 50 crores and hence they are not an SMC. So, a turnover is less than 250, so be it. One of them, borrowings are greater than 50 crores which means they become a non-SMC. If they become a non-SMC, will they get any exemptions or relaxations? No. So, over here, do you not need to write the detailed solution or summary will work? So, over here, borrowings that is 51 CR into bracket greater than 50 CR. Therefore, non-SMC into bracket no relaxation slash exemption. Borrowings 51 crores that is greater than 50 crores. Therefore, non-SMC into bracket no relaxation bracket closed. Are we clear with this? So, that is question number 4. 5 we will do later. Go to question number 6. It is a recent May 24 RTP question. Based upon the criteria for rating non-corporate entities. Achha, finally, you have non-corporate every other sum we did was for corporate entities. Categorize the following as level 1, level 2, 3 or 4 for the purpose of compliance of accounting standards in India. First, Rama Textiles whose turnover excluding other income exceeds 10 crores but does not exceed 50 crores in the immediately preceding accounting year. Tell me which level is this? Think and tell me. Achha, level 1 is what? Great. Turnover kai baat karte. Forget loans now because point one is only talking about turnover. Turnover greater than 250. Second is between 50 to 250. Third is between 10 to 50. We are falling in which? Level 3. So, over here when you are writing the detailed solution, you will explain the law. Mention level 1, level 2, level 3 and then connect the law to the given case and we will say that this is what level 3. Abhi ke zamane mein ye zyada aega aapko MCQ side pe rather than it coming on the full fledged side but nevertheless if it comes you should be aware. Yes. Star Industries is having borrowings including public deposits. Okay. See first of all turnover has to be excluding other income. Borrowings can be including other public deposits. That's fine. In excess of rupees 2 crores but not exceeding 10 crores at any time during the immediately preceding accounting year. Answer when I tell you to everyone thinks we are only talking about borrowings between 2 to 10 crores. Which level are we? Sure? 3. Level 1 greater than 50. Level 2 between 10 and 50. Level 3 between 2 and 10. So, this is level 3. Are we clear with this? Okay. Now, Newman Industries is having borrowings including public deposits 
of less than rupees 50 lakhs at any time during the immediately preceding accounting year. What is this? Level 4. We don't know about other data, but if your borrowings are less than 2 crores, it will be level 4. SS Finance is a financial institution carrying on business in India since the last 10 years. Achha, this is a financial institution. Banks, insurance companies, these are financial institutions. They will go in which level? 1. Remember we had mentioned that banks, NBFCs, uh, insurance companies, all of these are financial institutions. They are dealing with public money. And if I deal with public money, they are scared. They say by level 1 mein rakhna achhe. listed companies hota, these companies will also go there. Now DD Finance is a holding company of SS Finance. Entity mentioned in point 0.5 above. Achha, what did we say? Holding company as well as subsidiary company of a level 1 company. Just say COVID hua tha, pata hai, if one person gets COVID, the entire house is quarantined. SI is sabe, if one of them is level 1, then holding will also be level 1, subsidiary will also be level 1. Are yes or no? So DD Finance, which is a holding company of SS Finance, what do you guys think? 1, 2 or 3? 1, level 1. And reliable cooperative bank, a cooperative bank carrying on banking operations since the last 15 years. This will be level? Sorry? 1. So if I go to see level 1, level 1, level 1. Are we clear with this? So when I am revising, I will mark this question as important. Abhi ye question kar lege to question number 1, question number 4 gets automatically done. 1 and 4 mein yehi isab hai borrowing and everything. So if I revise this question on the last day, banks are also covered, holding subsidiary knowledge is also covered, limits are also covered. So I would put this question as important. Another question that I would put as important is question number 2 because yaha pe wo 2 years consecutive limit is getting tested. So this is something that I will revise before my exams and chalo, hai, question number 3 mein yehi ek point aapko dekhna tha. If you see that, that is more than sufficient, you don't need to read the entire question and entire solution the day before your exams. And in question number 4, if you want, you can revise it. Mere sab se, if you do question 6, 4 dekhne ka zarurat nahi hai. But the problem is question 6 is for level 1, 2, 3, 4. Question number 4 is for SMC, non-SMC. So 4 will revise. 4 and 1 same hai. In the day before your exam, I don't need to spend time doing question 1 and question 4 both. I need to do one of them. So we 4 kar lege because usme ek limit is below, ek limit is above. So we'll do question 4. So ye hamara kya revision kar dega? This will do the SMC, non-SMC revision. Question 6 will do level 1, 2, 3, 4 proper revision. Question number 2 will do that special case of 2 consecutive years ka revision. Are we clear with this? Okay. And then is the last theory question. Okay. That is question number 5. Before you go over here, we will have to discuss something which is there in your applicability of standard section. This is again a theory part. This is not there in your CA inter, but it is there in your CA finals. Now, as we speak, India is doing parallel applicability of accounting standards. India may accounting standard itself, but internationally, do you think the same accounting standards are going on? No. Before you go to that discussion, let us say you clear your CA inter, you clear your CA final, you abroad. Most Indians, majority Indians, you think go where generally? US, then any other places, UK, Australia, New Zealand, etc. So these are very common Switzerland, very common places that Indians go to travel. What is the common thread between these places? Most of them. The developed countries, expensive, probably beautiful countries, but they speak English. So even if we have to go to a one or two week vacation, we say that Japan, Korea, mein jayege, kya khalege, pata hi chalega. you don't know what is there because they don't speak your language. So most, uh, there will be adventurous people. But most people would prefer that we will go to places, at least it's a foreign land, we will go to places where we at least understand their language. And hence they say that I have to go to vacation. I most of the times go to Australia, New Zealand, UK, you have to go to the US, 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 you have to go
right? There may be beautiful countries, but yeah, they don't speak the language that we know. And hence we are little reluctant. Now, if you have to, you have that reluctance in going for a two week vacation. Imagine if I am a fund who has to invest hundreds of crores. When I invest in a company, what is the language the company speaks? The company speaks through its balance sheet and profit and loss account. So when I see the balance sheet and profit, I am a US investor of Citibank, Fidelity. I am a US investor. I want to invest in an Indian company. The moment I see the balance sheet, I say, Kya, ko to CFA, CPA mein padha hai nahi gaya ye sab. I have been taught about general international accounting standards. India ke accounting standards mere ko nahi hai. So this profit they are claiming to be 100 crores. But mere ko pata nahi ki profit mein kya hai. Like Spanish dekho and English dekho. Dono same hi likhte. But I don't know Spanish language. So I said, I am a pure vegetarian. I am not sure what I am eating. So over here, I am a little reluctant. I am a little reluctant. In a similar way, I would say that as a first point of resistance, I will say, ke, yaar, I don't know how this profit is calculated. It is calculated as per accounting standards. But as an international US, UK, European investor, I don't know accounting standards. An Indian chartered accountant might know that. I don't know it. Abhi dunia mein 200 countries hai, mein thodi na har ek country ka accounting padhne baithunga. And hence internationally there is an accounting framework called as IFRS. Have you heard about it? International Financial Reporting Standards. IFRS, it is issued by IASB. International Accounting Standards Board. Which is there in the UK and as we speak close to 140 or 150 countries across the world are preparing their accounts as per IFRS. So what they have done is, they have said like by English, English is largely a global language, a lot of countries speak English. In a similar way, a lot of countries, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, UK, France, everywhere, Germany, everywhere their balance sheets are as per IFRS. And hence, India also decided that let us converge towards IFRS. What do you mean by converge? That means let us also adopt IFRS. Let us also follow IFRS. Now IFRS is an international accounting standard and it is very, I would say very complex as compared to accounting standards that you are studying. Jo aapko kafi aasan hai. IFRS, international accounting standards are quite complex. And hence institute ne thoda daya khaya. They said ke yaar, because the big companies, they can afford, aapne big four ke baare mein suna hai? PwC, EY and all of this, they can afford these big expensive chartered accountants. But if I force the smaller companies also to adopt IND AS, which is similar to IFRS, then it will be very expensive. Ho A small CA firm will not know IFRS, they will not know IND AS. And hence, as we speak in India, the biggest companies are all following IND AS. It is mandatory. Whereas the smaller firms will follow I, will follow accounting standards. So if you do your article ship in a big four or a big CA firm, up almost certainly India's ke clients dekhoge. What is India's? India's is an accounting standard which is in line with IFRS. However, if you go to a small CA firm, who has small companies as its clients, then usually you will have clients which are accounting standard clients. So institute bolta hai ki yaar, as a CA, aapko dono aana padega. Like, you have GST ke baare mein suna hai? GST. Earlier there was service tax. There was VAT. When we used to study, there was service tax and VAT. Service tax and VAT is abolished now. It is replaced by GST. Accounting standard mein aisa nahi hai. AS is not abolished. Some companies in India follow AS. Some companies in India follow India. So, what has institute done? Institute says, some CA inter mein bachche ko pura AS sikha dege. Start to end. At CA final, we will teach you index. So, when you do CA final, you will see almost the same index. Maa pe 34, 35 topics ka index hoga. Same index. But instead of accounting standards, you will see Indian accounting standards called as index. And that is why at CA inter level, this is relatively less important. Because aapko to ASE padhae jata. Then what is index? Aapko si brief pata hona chahiye. What is index? What is index? Index is international accounting standards. So, it is based on IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards, which is issued by IASB. <laughs> now, the problem is IASB is, is uh, a European authority. Now, you are a developing economy. Your problems are quite different as compared to the problems they face. 
so there may be certain things that you have in your country which is very unique to us which is not there probably in us europe etc so we said okay we will adopt ifrs but there are certain areas where we don't agree with your treatment where we would beg to differ as i bolta na debates me i'm sorry i would beg to differ i would beg to differ on certain places you will study this further like for example ifrs says that if i acquire a business like itna mna hote rehta hai apne suna there is a lot of m and a if i acquire a business let's say walmart acquired flipkart a few years back if i were to acquire a business i might pay a purchase consideration of 100 crores that is what i am paying and in return i get something which is worth 120 crores so to mere ko to fayda ho gaya so i paid 100 for something which is worth 120 like for example tiktok got banned in india if you are aware during covid for certain political reasons it got banned in india tiktok had to wind up its indian operations let's say someone comes and acquires tiktok at a cheap price they pay 100 crores the net assets of tiktok are worth 120 crores so for something which is worth 120 i paid 100 crores the same problem hua mcdonalds in russia mcdonalds was operating in russia now russia put a war on ukraine ukraine is like one of the member nato nations so a lot of people in us said ke boss you are earning money from russia you have to sell your russian business mcdonalds actually sold the russian business they said no we don't want to operate in russia but when they went to sell it they got only 100 crores they had a business stores worth 120 crores so 20 crore ka mcdonalds ko nuksan hua but buyer ko fayda hua na the buyer acquired it at a 20 rupee profit ifrs says that profit should go to the profit and loss account we beg to differ we say nahi this is a profit on purchase samajhte aapne ab tak ca foundation 11 12 whenever you have recorded profits tell me one instant where you have recorded profits on purchase you have always recorded profit on sale i am buying a business of 100 and 20 and paying 100 okay i am getting a 20 benefit yaar but maine kuch becha nahi maine to kharida i have bought it so we say no 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 we don't agree that you take it to the profit and loss account we will take it to capital reserve have you heard about capital reserve sometimes i think ca foundation mein share forfeiture wagera tha aapko share forfeiture ultimately went where capital reserve we said no no let us not let this not affect the pnl or in india uh, have you heard about inflation india mein acha khasa inflation but you think us europe 0.2% 0.5% aisa inflation in india means a good 8 10% inflation for example so in rent if you are staying on rented properties you might have heard about escalation clause have you heard every year rents will increase by 10 10% in india almost every agreement has escalation clause ab us mein ab socho 0.2% ka inflation aapko likhne ko bhi sharam aayega 0.2% se kya rent badhane ka yaar if your rent is 100 rupees one year later 0.2% so people don't even consider escalation and inflation as seriously over there because the price increases are very minuscule in fact japan is one of the only countries in the world which is in deflation apne suna hai deflation deflation koi country nahi hai japan is in deflation since the 1990s 20 ek saal se woh deflation ke andar which is very very rare abhi usme to aap escalation kar hi nahi paoge it's also a developed country abhi unke accounting side mein ye sab kuch likha hi nahi hai escalation is a big reality in india so we say no we back to differ inflation mein ye karna chahiye are you getting this these are called as carve outs you understand carve outs carve out means there is an entire sculpture that is there ifrs in that sculpture i will remove certain things which i don't think are adaptable to my economic condition and put it put things which are more suitable for me that instead of capital uh, pnl i will say gains will go in capital reserve for example और एस्केलेशन सर्टन स्पेसिफाइड ट्रीटमेंट्स आर टू बी डन तो हमने इंटरनेशनल इन्वेस्टर को क्या बोला हमने बोला यू डोंट हैव टू स्टडी द एंटायर इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स नो वी हैव मेड अ स्मॉल 10 15 पेज बुकलेट फॉर यू एक्चुअल इन एक्चुअल लाइफ वेयर वी हैव गिवन यू द कार्व आउट्स कार्व आउट समझते हैं तुमने जो पढ़ा है फारिस वो सेम हमने अडॉप्ट किया है पैरा नंबर स्टैंडर्ड नंबर एवरीथिंग इज द सेम एक्सेप्ट फॉर दिस 15 प्लेसेस वेयर वी आर डिफरिंग यू स्टडी दोस 15 प्लेसेस एंड यू नो आवर अकाउंटिंग स्टेटमेंट्स 
तो ऐसा नहीं कि भाई जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल नाउ लेट से गुजराती और अब गुजराती भी देखो तो मे बी द डायलेक्ट माइट चेंज फ्रॉम वन सेक्शन इन गुजरात टू अनदर मारवाड़ी हो आप तो मे बी द डायलेक्ट माइट चेंज फ्रॉम वन सेक्शन टू अनदर सेक्शन ऑफ योर ओन स्टेट तो आपने दो चार वर्ड सीख लिए तो आपको समझ में आ गया कि अच्छा दिस इज वॉट दे मीन वेन दे से दिस सो आई एम टेलिंग कि आपको सिर्फ ये पंद्रह चीज देखना है यू डोंट हैव यू डोंट हैव टू वरी के नो नो आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू एंटर इन टू एन इंडियन कंपनी आई डोंट नो हाउ दे प्रिपेयर अकाउंट नो नो फरगेट दैट You you don't have to pass Indian exams. You don't have have to to pass exams. study about Indian standards. You just study these carve outs. Samjhe carve outs where we have differed from IFRS. And hence, if you understand that, you know how we have prepared our accounting statements. So, what do you mean by carve outs? Carve outs are places in your IND AS. What is an IND AS? IND AS is applicable to bigger companies. कंपनीज हु आर लिस्टेड कंपनीज हु नेटवर्थ इज ग्रेटर देन टू फिफ्टी करोर यहां पर टर्न ओवर नहीं देखा जाएगा यहां पर योर लेट से योर बोरोइंग आर नॉट सीन यहां पर ओनली योर नेटवर्थ इज सीन दैट इज शेयर कैपिटल एंड रिजर्व इफ योर शेयर कैपिटल एंड रिजर्व आर ग्रेटर देन टू फिफ्टी करोर देन यू हैव टू फॉलो इंडेस और यू आर अ लिस्टेड कंपनी यू हैव टू फॉलो इंडेस नहीं आपके पास चॉइस है नो देर इज नो चॉइस बट सर माई नेटवर्क इज लेस टू फिफ्टी करोर आई एम अनलिस्टेड आपको क्या लग रहा है मेजोरिटी कंपनीज आर लिस्टेड कंपनीज और अनलिस्टेड कंपनीज अनलिस्टेड देर आर हार्डली टेन थाउजेंड लिस्टेड कंपनीज इन इंडिया देर वुड बी टेन मिलियन अनलिस्टेड कंपनीज इन इंडिया सो मेजोरिटी ऑफ द कंपनीज आर अनलिस्टेड अगेन विद इन दी अनलिस्टेड कंपनीज विल बी वेरी फ्यू कंपनीज नेटवर्थ ऑफ मोर देन टू फिफ्टी करोर दो सौ पचास करोड़ बड़ी बात नेटवर्थ होना Very few companies have that kind of thing. तो वो बड़ी कंपनीज कैन अफोर्ड बिग अकाउंटेंट्स एंड एक्चुअली इंटरनेशनल पैसा उधर ही आएगा आपको लग रहा है बाजू के किराने स्टोर वाले में इंटरनेशनल इन्वेस्टर इज गोइंग टू इन्वेस्ट मनी नो तो उसको क्यों इन्वेस्ट करवाना है यार वी आर सींग इंटरनेशनल इन्वेस्टर शुड इन्वेस्ट इन यू बट थोड़ी ना किराने वाले में पैसा डालने वाले डीमार्ट दे विल पुट मनी हाँ तो डीमार्ट विल प्रिपेयर इट्स अकाउंट एज पर इंडेस बट अ स्मॉल किराना स्टोर हु इज अ कंपनी डीड नॉट फॉलो इंडेस so the standards so the applicability for indes which will be taught to but as a chartered accountant you need to know both because aapke paas so client koi bhi aa sakta to in ca inter you will study as in ca final you will study indes agar aapka as strong aapka indes strong aapka as weak ca final mein aapka indes ko bhi problem aayega because indes is an improvised in this one step above not one two or three steps above as to aapka as hi weak to indes bhi weak hoga at final ca are we clear with this okay so what does point question number 5 ask you question number 5 says what do you mean by carve outs or carve ins as per indes carve outs would mean certain thing which is there in ifrs we are removing that and putting our own guidance it is a carve in what we are carving is our guidance what is carved out is the guidance which is being removed additional guidance that we are giving certain changes have been made in ind as ये थियरी आई वुड नॉट रियली पुट दिस एज इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम एन एग्जाम परस्पेक्टिव बट इफ द वर्ड कार्व आउट कम्स यू शुड बी अवेयर व्हाट इट मींस सर्टेन चेंजेस हैव बीन मेड इन इंडिया कंसीडरिंग इकोनॉमिक एनवायरमेंट ऑफ द कंट्री लाइक आई गिव यू द एग्जांपल ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन व्हिच इज डिफरेंट एज कंपेयर टू द इकोनॉमिक एनवायरमेंट प्रेज्यूम टू बी इन एक्जिस्टेंस बाय आईएफआरएस दीस डिफरेंसेस आर ड्यू टू डिफरेंस इन इकोनॉमिक कंडीशंस प्रेवेलेंट इन इंडिया these differences are in deviation are deviation to the accounting principles and practices stated in ifrs which are commonly known as carve outs okay so if you just highlight this these are differences due to economic conditions in india differences which are deviations in accounting principles stated as per ifrs are commonly known as carve outs additional guidance given in indes over and above what is given in ifrs is termed as a carve in are we clear with this is everyone clear yes aja so what we will do is we will write down over here there is some space we will write down a small note regarding indes we are on page 3 of your velocity book write down a small note about indes from an exam perspective ind as underline <coughs> most countries follow international 
financial reporting standards into bracket IFRS bracket closed full stop in order to attract global investors comma MCA Ministry of Company Affairs MCA has notified specified large companies to follow ind as full stop next paragraph in simple terms comma listed companies listed companies or listed companies into bracket all likh lo all or unlisted companies with write down with a different color pen net worth yahan pe na turnover hai na borrowings net worth greater than equal to 250 crores will have to comply with ind as full stop ind as is based on ifrs Indes is based on IFRS. Full stop. However, comma. Considering conditions in India. Considering conditions in India. Comma. There are certain differences which are called as. Kya bolte isko? What are they called as? Carve outs. Called as carve outs into bracket ind as done in final CS. So, itna aapke paas knowledge hai ind as ka that is more than sufficient. You don't need to go beyond this. <coughs> are we clear with this? So, these are all the questions which are there. There are a few. Theory based MCQs, I will just discuss this. This is from your actual study material. Let us try to 5 5 MCQs each. You can tell me which option seems to be most logical. These are more theory things. I would not really put a lot of weight behind this, but in case it comes, okay. This is from your study material. Have you ordered the material or you don't have it? 
ठीक है बट अदरवाइज यू कैन ऑलवेज हैव द सॉफ्ट कॉपी फ्रॉम द इंस्टीट्यूट वेबसाइट और वी विल जस्ट कंपाइल एंड गिव यू दिस एमसीक्यू सेपरेटली बट अदरवाइज इंस्टीट्यूट के मटेरियल में आएगी यू डोंट नीड टू स्टडी एमसीक्यू सेपरेटली पर से पॉइंट वन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स फॉर नॉन कॉर्पोरेट एंटिटीज आर इश्यूड बाय होम सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट आईसीएआई और एमसीए नॉन कॉर्पोरेट एंटिटीज आईसीएआई ऑप्शन सी परफेक्ट अगर ये कॉर्पोरेट लिखा रहता था एमसीए मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कंपनी अफेयर्स अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स फर्स्ट हार्मोनाइज अकाउंटिंग पॉलिसीज एंड एलिमिनेट नॉन कंपेरेबिलिटी ऑफ फाइनेंस स्टेटमेंट डेट मेक सेंस सेकेंड इंप्रूव रिलेटेबिलिटी ऑफ फाइनेंस स्टेटमेंट डेट ऑल्सो मेक सेंस यस so both a and b and point d manipulate the data for the management what should you select sorry c agar aap d karoge to negative marking mil jayega right okay so uh, it is essential to standardize the accounting principles and policies in order to ensure transparency consistency comparability all of the above all of the above which committee is responsible for approval okay of accounting standards and their modification for the purpose of application of to the companies nafra mca central government some committee and iasb sorry nafra or mca mca agar aapko bola jata tha which committee is responsible for consultation nafra is not an approving authority mca is having legal rights nafra icai will consult with nafra Advisory responsibility. Approval to your Ministry of Company Affairs दे सकता है. Nafra cannot give you approval. Are we getting this? Okay, यहाँ पे consultation दिया रहता है. Then our answer would have been Nafra. Global standards facilitate cross-border flow of money, comparability, uniformity, and transparency. All of the above. What is this? All of the above. Okay, that is regarding introduction to accounting standards when it comes to mcqs again let us review this once mcqs for applicability of accounting standards both of these these topics are basic introductory topics not really important from an exam perspective point 1 non corporate entities which are not level 1 entities whose turnover excluding other income exceeds dash rupees but does not exceed 250 crores in the immediately preceding accounting year are classified as level 2 entities kya bolenge forget the options ideally non corporate entities which are not level 1 whose turnover exceeds x crores but does not exceed 250 crores are level 2 level 2 mein kya aayega yahan pe answer 50 sure answer over here has to be 50 that is option c Point two, you may not be able to solve as of now. Currently, eventually you will. The following accounting standards are not applicable to non-corporate entities falling in the level two hierarchy. Yes, ten, seventeen, two, and thirteen. Seventeen is seventeen and three are two standards. Seventeen is segment reporting. Three is cash flow statement. So, जो apply नहीं होएगा. Other standards क्या है हमको पता नहीं है. We have not yet studied it. So, ये आप circle करके रख सकते हो. But such an MCQ. and you should know which standards are not applicable point 3 this you have to revise point 2 for sure all non corporate entities engage in commercial industrial and business reporting entities whose turnover excluding other income exceeds 250 crores in the immediately preceding accounting year are classified as what turnover is greater than 250 crores 1 2 3 4 1 option b all non corporate entities Engage in commercial, industrial, or business activities having borrowings, including public deposit, in excess of two crores, but does not exceed ten crores at any time. So, which answer will be? Borrowings between two and ten crores comes in which hierarchy? Three. Perfect. So, this is level three. That is right. Option C. And last, small and medium-sized company means a company which may be a bank, financial institution, or insurance company. Is that correct? No. Definitely no. Whose turnover, excluding other income, does not exceed 250 crores in the immediately preceding year? Is that correct? Turnover does not exceed 250 crores. Is that correct? Yes. Whose turnover does not exceed 50 crores? No, that is wrong. Maybe or even if your turnover is 200 crores, you are an SMC. One, two, three, they are asking. They are asking you about SMC. And last, whose turnover, excluding other income, does not exceed 
500 crores in the immediately preceding year. Is that correct? Most of your answer is option B. Are we clear with this? Perfect. So that takes care of introduction. Achha, time pass ho gaya aaj ke liye. We'll jump into the actual accounting standards in tomorrow's class. Okay? So we'll stop for the day today and we'll continue tomorrow. Okay?